Welcome to Conscious TV with Tom and Ramon. A uh, couple things we'll go over real quick, just like normal. Uh, visit our website. We've got a few things going on there that I think you'll want to take a look at. Our new paradigm page. Uh, we're uh, adding quite a few things there regularly. We've got some uh, heirloom seeds that we just posted on there, outlets for heirloom seeds. Uh, take a look at that. Uh, we found that you've got to be really careful with the uh, seeds that you, you find on the Internet. They might say heirloom at the top of the page, but you, if, you, if you just randomly pick seeds that you want to grow, uh, make sure that you pay attention to the, the fine, fine uh, print on what you're buying because they'll mix, they mix in the Monsanto crap in with, some, with the uh, heirloom stuff on some of these sites that we've seen, so just be careful there. Also, uh, we do work on a donation basis, so we got a donate tab there. i got to put that out there, I guess. Uh, and besides that, uh, Ramon, we've got a pretty special lady with us tonight. Yes, we do. Gentry is an author of a book within a book, Dreaming Down Heaven, a re revolutionary new take on personal growth genre that combines accessible notification with illuminating fiction. Dreaming Down Heaven presents 12 life-changing keystones to awaking through entertaining fiction, brings them into three-dimensional reality. Together, the notification and fiction presentation of Gentry's powerful teaching provides the knowledge necessary to surmount fear, awaken to self-love, and step into a life of outrageous joy. Ooh, outrageous joy. Yay! Jeannie, how are you? Hi, honey. Outrageous joy. It's great. Love yeah. it. I love it. Well, Jenny, so I, I'm reading your book now, and I'm about three quarters of the way through the fiction half of it. And I, I have got to say, this is some fantastic work. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen this, uh, quite this approach to uh, uh, this type of work. Amazing. Amazing. Thank, it, thank you, honey. I have to say, I, I'm really grateful to hear that. You know, some people say to me, well, you probably don't need feedback. <laughs> and it's like, why? <laughs> you know? So I'm delighted that you like it. I'm delighted. So thank what you. Is, is this your first book? Well, <laughs> it's my first book in that I had to teach myself how to write. And so I have three books <laughs> that... Uh, as I was learning to write, that, you know, that I never really submitted for a publisher, I was just trying to get my ideas together, my understanding of, uh, you know, what I really wanted to share. I always knew that this style of book, and I don't mean the fact that there's a fiction and a nonfiction. I mean just the, the fiction part where it was a very modern take on um, a woman's life who sort of, let's just say accidentally, ha ha, uh, you know, gets on this great journey of awakening. So I wanted it to be very contemporary, kind of hip, you know, and not boring. Because, you know, some of these books, you can just be so bored. Br brilliant wisdom, but, you know, you've got you've to gotta keep your attention on it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. So let's go back to your own personal awakening. Where where does it start, if you don't mind talking about that? Well, you know, honey, there weren't any burning bushes. There was no chorus of angels, nary a trumpet. Um, not, not a burning bush. It was very disappointing. In fact, I would have to say that any idea I had about awakening was in hindsight. Um so do you want me to start about my journey, or do you want me to start about how I figured it out? Well, um, let's start with the journey. Well, I, I think, like many people, I had um, been a dilettante. And I honestly don't even remember what that word means anymore, but it was sort of like I was lazy. You know, I'd read about it, and I would uh, pretend to be spiritual, and I had no idea I was pretending. I had no idea, but I realized you know, I'd done all these things to quote unquote save the world, and I've been very active in social change and and so forth. And and one day I I finally got that I wasn't going to be able to save the world until I saved myself. And um, so there was there was a day I actually drew a line in the sand 
that was along the lines of, okay, no more play. It, it, you're, it's going to have to get real. And, uh, and I would say, and I remember when that was, you know, very, I remember very distinctly the day, what I was doing and that I was going to start bringing my awareness um, into the moment kind of thing, which of course takes a long time to really get into practice. But so I, I wore amulets and everything to hook my own attention, you know, so that I would um, just uh, stay with the program instead of only going to the program where I didn't, when I didn't feel good. And I think with so many of these things, um, the only time we really get spiritual is when the world is sort of falling down around us. Right. And then we'll go, you know, and then, and I had to uh, be honest, you know, my world had fallen down everywhere around me. You know, it, it didn't have the trappings of failure. I mean, I had cute clothes and, you know, a good job and all of that. But the internal world was just not very sparkly. So um, <laughs> I, had to get, I had to get tough, boys. I had to get tough, you know, with myself. It's, it's funny. It always seems, because um, both me and Tom and actually all of our guests, including yourself, um, have had that moment where we just get kicked in the head you know, backhand. Um, and it, it seems for some reason, I know it doesn't have to be that way, but for some reason it seems that that's the only way us humans really get the pictures when we get slapped. I absolutely believe that's true because it's so easy to say, to stay sound asleep, no matter, um, you know, that hurts or not. It's easier to be asleep because, you know, to wake up, or whatever you want to call it, you have to go against the whole grain of everything we've been taught. I mean, you have to break with fear, for God's sakes, which means that you're going to go out of sorts with the rest of the belief system. You know, if you're going to really try to stay out of fear, then who are you going to talk to? You know, because folks, you know, the, the way that our society or our belief system or however you call it, you know, it's just based on fear. And to pull out of that means to go out of harmony with the folks. And yet, that's the only way, you know. So, mm -hmm. it's an interesting thing. It's not for the faint of heart, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. Did you uh, grow up uh, Christian? Do you come from a Christian background? Uh, you know, I'd have to say yes. But I, um, you know, it's a very delicate question, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> I would say that my family did their very best uh, to create that um a belief system within me, yes. Uh, for, I guess for a lot of us, um, uh, for me personally, growing up uh, Christian and then later start questioning it, and when I started questioning it to to the who I thought were the right people, you know, the the priest and, and my dad and stuff like that, and it was just don't question those things. Just accept it for, know. you know, and it just that wasn't a good enough answer for me. Yes, it's, I think it's very complicated. For myself, there was the hypocrisy that I happened to witness um, at a very young age that I, I didn't buy the hypocrisy. You know, I didn't buy the judgment. And, you know, I didn't know how to get out of it, but there was those things. And, and you know, I want to be clear. I think that there are profound, advanced, amazing spiritual beings who are Christian as there are with, you know, all of the sacred traditions. But so many of uh, the subsets, if you will, of Christianity or, or any of the rest, um, they start laying the traditions of man over it as opposed to trying to understand what you might think of as a tradition of God. So, um, you know, I Jesus is my hero. I mean, I think Jesus is the bomb. I There is a thing that man ever said that I didn't think was pristine and amazing and and sacred. Uh, but I don't hold the, the concepts of the religion very close to my heart. Right. Their interpretations have a tendency to uh, become their law. Yes. And, of course, that doesn't seem to reflect uh, the, the teachings of the Christ. It doesn't seem to reflect it at all. Right. You mean... The, the religion takes it from the personal relationship with God into the community relationship with God, you know, or the, 
the church's relationship. You have you can't have your relationship directly with God. You have to have it through the church. Through the intermediary. Mediary. Right. And you know, I, I I've actually thought about this with my own students because it's a complicated thing, from my my point of view as a teacher, that I both have to sort of hook a student's attention to keep them interested enough so, so that they will, you know, stay present to learn and at the same time be trying to push them away because they're going to have to go direct. You know, it's like rely on me but don't really rely on me, you know. It, right. Because you, you, you sort of need some guidance, you know, to break with this whole crazy belief system. And at the same time, uh, you're going to have to um, go direct. Without an intermediary, you're going to have to, you know, be present with the silent knowledge or the universal consciousness or whatever little word, you know, you want to talk about with your communication, you know. At least that's my opinion. Yeah, I kind of see it as, as, as the teachers out there, all they can, if they're a good teacher, all that they really can do is, is point and show somebody where the door is and that the person has to walk through it themselves. And, uh, well, isn't that the truth? You know, the thing that was so motivating to me about writing this book is I thought that I was probably the last person on the planet who would wake up. In fact, the thought never occurred to me. Uh, I just wanted to get rid of the pain. And so to really, um, you know, get in there, um, it was like I, I felt that I had to leave a breadcrumb trail of words or something like that so that I could... Um, if, if anybody was willing to learn by any of my mistakes, let me just tell you what they were, you know. And, I, you know, I don't know if people can really do that. It's like we almost need to replace the old belief system with some new beliefs, and maybe it helps to see the possibilities of new beliefs. But it does seem like, as like Ramon was saying, we have to sort of run real hard into that brick wall uh, to start shaking out some new behaviors, you know. Yeah, I, I remember for me, um, I was 17 or 18, and in what I thought was spirituality was you had to belong to some type of organization, and not necessarily the Christian church, because I was kind of done with that by by that age, but then when I started looking at these other spiritual beliefs, if it didn't have like a church setting, then it wasn't good enough, so... It's like that addiction to to the mediator. We've become so addicted that I, I see it happening with everything. Um, you go to your meditation teacher, and and I see people become addicted to them, and they they don't know how to become their own teachers and their own masters. Well, she kind of she kind of talks about something real similar to that in her book. Uh, uh, you're not the voices in your head, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I, I, I kind of see a strong parallel there in what Ramon was saying in, in, in what I just read the other day out of the book. Uh, and by the way, I love that, uh, uh, the, the acronym uh, LIQUID. Oh, do you? Oh, my God. That, uh, that is so awesome. I, that is one I will, I will use in my personal life. That's great. You know, and it, it's, a, it, it's tricky because you have to, um, each of those steps in LIQUID, um, you know, it's a whole process unto itself, but at least it's a way to kind of hold it. You know what I'm saying? Right. But uh, but, but I want to go back uh, to what uh, Ramon was saying, if I can, for a second. And then, of course, I'd be delighted to talk about liquid or anything else. And now I just completely lost my train of thought. How's that for me? <laughs> <laughs> you said something I wanted to talk about, Lord. Well, I was talking about the ad addiction to, to teachers and mediators. Okay. He, there's just sort of one line I wanted to throw out there. And that is, we must be willing to, to, to give up seeking to find. You know, it, it's, it's, not, it's not like there's one hard and fast rule. You sort of have to be willing to do everything that you can to find out the truth. I mean, we... There's so many places of deceit in our world. And then there's so many places of just illusion where it's not bad or good. It's just um, 